So welcome back. We had a fairly whirlwind tour of this idea of scripts, which are knowledge structures, which are like conceptualizations packaged into some large data structure, which represent typical events in typical situations. And such knowledge can be used to understand when somebody is talking about those situations. We started by looking at the uh, subway script uh, and you can see that it uses uh, terms like uh, patron which is patron group, then of course p trans which is part of conceptualization and so on, conceptual dependency and so on. And there are other things that are being weighed. So, there are things like uh, buys ticket, then goes to the platform and then a subway arrives and there is a driver who has brought the subway there. Then the patron enters the subway. So, this is typically what happens when you are going on a subway journey or a metro or a local train journey. So, as we said scripts have roles essentially. So, roles are the, it is like when you write a play, you have different characters and each character is a role in the play. So, if you have done a play in your school, you would have got a particular role essentially. So, in that sense, there are roles in scripts essentially. So, there is a patron group to start with, which is a group of subway riders. It can be one individual also. Then there is a cashier who will sell you a ticket. Then there may be a conductor which would be there in the subway, maybe who will check your ticket at some point. Then there should be a driver, the person controlling the train and there should be an organization essentially, which is running the metro. So, in many countries, trains are run by private organizations, unlike in India. In India, they are run by the government, but some metros in our country also are run by private organizations. Each candidate for a role must match the semantic category. We have been talking about this on and off even when we talked about uh, conceptual dependency, conceptual analysis, semantic parsing. We said that you want to match the semantic category. So, for example, if you are eating something, then that something better be food essentially. Even though we were forced to look at a sentence like Jack ate a book or something like that, uh, because there was no other meaning of the word ate, we had to accept the fact that he has eaten a book even though book is not edible. But in general, one expects the semantic category to match and that is an important uh, aspect of natural language understanding. So, it is not only that you have to understand the structure of sentences, which is syntactic parsing. You have to also match the semantics of the different components of the sentence essentially. And what we have shown with scripts is that there is a third aspect to it, which some linguists call as pragmatics, which means you have to bring in th the knowledge of the uh, background knowledge of the world in the situation that you are operating in. So, in earlier times, one would say that you know you first do the syntactic parsing, then you do the semantic parsing, then you do the pragmatics essentially. But that as Shank and his group showed does not make sense. You have to do everything at the same time essentially. The moment you start listening to a story, you start thinking of a particular situation. So, already the pragmatics or the situation is coming into play. And then of course, that makes the task of searching through the possible interpretations much simpler essentially. If you know that you are talking about a restaurant skips, you know what does it mean that he ordered a burger for example. So, semantic category is one thing, situational knowledge is still a larger thing and the sentence structure is also important because we saw the example of, of I saw the Grand Canyon flying to New York. So, it is only English which helps us to understand the fact that the relation between the fact that I saw the Grand Canyon and I was flying to New York 
is that one event happened when the other one was happening essentially. The semantics tells us that Grand Canyons do not fly to New York, but this English language tells us that what is the relation between the two sub sentences, sub parts of the sentence. So, the riders, the cashiers, the conductors, drivers, they must be human. Of course, we are talking about driverless trains already. If you go to, for example, Dubai, you might uh, get into a driverless train. And nowadays, we are talking about dri driverless uh, uh, trucks. They seem to be already operational in parts of the US. And cars, of course, you know, driverless cars is everybody's expectation of the future. But this sub org, it must be an organization because it is a company which is running the subway train. Then scripts have props. So, they have roles and they have props. That means, there are the artifacts which one speaks about when one talks about scripts. So, for example, the counter, it uh, must be mentioned somewhere here. Okay, we talked about it in some earlier situation essentially. So, a subway involves the following that uh, there is a token which sometimes we use to enter the platform. Then the money, fare is the money that is paid for a token. The turnstile is the typical thing you cross through if you have been to a typical metro station. You insert your token or you show your pass and then you can go over the turnstile. There may be seats uh, on the platform, so platform seat. Uh, then of course, there are subways. Then subways are made up of cars or bogies or coaches, whatever you want to say. That there are different cars in the train and you can get into one of them. Then in those cars, there may be seats and there may be straps for patron to grasp. If you are standing, you can hold on to a strap. And there would be an exit gate in this thing. So, you can see that this is like describing the whole subway journey. So, what are the things that one can talk about when we are talking about this? So, obviously, this is background knowledge that is useful. If you want to hear somebody tell you of what happened when she was on this metro train, for example. We have events, of course, because scripts are collections of events, not only just collections, but they are sequences of events, maybe with branching and so on. And we, events is what the sentences in the story talk about essentially. So, for example, the event that the patron group gave, remember A trans is abstract transfer or transfer of position. Fair, fair if you see is the money that you pay for the token to the cashier. So, this is an event that you expect to happen in a slick. It may not be spoken about explicitly, but if I say that I bought a ticket, then you can expect that this would have been part of the set of actions which are unsaid. A lot of things are unsaid when we talk about stories. We never, never say everything that happens in total detail essentially. So, how are people represented? Uh, we have tokens like Hume 0, which was there earlier. There is a class of category person, title, doctor, occupation, MD, personal name, first name, Marcus, surname, Welby, age, implicitly in years, gender, masculine, and residing at a particular location, which is described here. It is a class locale. It has the locale type that it is an address. There is a street number. There is a street name. And there is a polity as to what is the organization, what is the uh, village or the town or the country that you are talking about. So, in this example, 
it is of class polity type it's a municipality and its name is new york essentially so you could describe a person using all these things then there is this question of semantic map mapping essentially so what can be a patron group essentially the patron group can either be a person or it can be a group and it must not have any other functionality in the script so a passenger is a passenger a driver is a driver a cashier is a cashier do not say that you know somebody can be both essentially not in, not in a script at least so when you say that a patron enters the station then the pattern is that the actor which is a patron group which can be either a person or a group of persons they p trans themselves to the inside part of the substation that is a pattern which is stored in the script any one of the following should match that this pattern that we have just seen here john and mary went into a subway station john walked into a subway station john strolled out of a restaurant up the street into a subway station the key part is into a subway station or john went into the bmt so bmt one must know is a permanent token and it is of type subway station or it is a type which runs so uh, this thing uh, so, uh, subway service essentially so scripts have headers you can have a direct header which says that the subway script is what is happening here it this is what is used to recognize which script to this thing so in that there is a patron group and there is a subway org and uh, there is an origin there is a destination this is what happens typically in a subway script essentially john took a subway to Conne Island will trigger this pattern, or will match this header. The local header. They went into the inside part of the subway station. John walked into the Borough Hall subway station. Essentially, this will also trigger a subway script. So we are looking at ways in which you will try. Of presumably, you have many scripts in your repository. which one to which is the one that applies to the current situation can be given by one of these clues either a direct header or a local header or an instrumental header that uh, the irt took john to the shia stadium so for example it might be the case that john went to the shia stadium and he took an irt for that essentially or a precondition header that uh, the patron group had a goal to go to the inside part of the station john wanted to go downtown and that is why he he trans he 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 p trans himself to the inside part of the station because he had the goal of going to some place okay so with this we come to an end talking about scripts when we meet next we will look at some other knowledge structures that can be stored to when people talk about people agents having goals and plans and actions so agents can have goals and to achieve those goals they can have plans so in a knowledge representation scheme you might say that to achieve this goal you have these plans so for example if you have the goal of satisfying hunger you could have a plan of going to a restaurant you could have a plan of taking out something from the refrigerator you could have a plan of uh, cooking something or you could have a plan of going to a friend's house and saying give me some food so goals have plans and plans of course are implemented 
by the actions that are part of the plan. And it's often that when we are listening to stories, we have we listen about we get to hear about actions, and maybe we have to infer the plans and the goals. But we will see that when we come back next.